In this video, we are going to implement the inventory SO script that will be our inventory class that will store a list of inventory items, which will be structs. And I'm going to explain why I'm using struct instead of a class as a way to store data about our items. Okay, let's get going. In the previous video, we have added the item SO scriptable object uh, script to our project and created the apple and the short scriptable objects so now it would be a good idea to test if we can actually put them into our ui inventory but before we can do that we need to create another script that will be our inventory itself so let's go to our scripts to the model uh, folder and let's, let's right click create a c sharp script and let's call it inventory so and let's open it up in Visual Studio. Okay. Now this will be another scriptable object. So we are going to instead of mono behavior have here scriptable object. Okay. I need to also add the create asset menu attribute so we can create it from the level of our ed inspector. Now we have our item SO class that stores the data about the item that we have in our inventory. But our inventory itself also needs to know how many of the items do we have and probably some sort of a current state of an item because if we have two swords for example one can be a bit damaged so we need to store the state of the item as well in our inventory so we can directly use our item so so below our definition of the inventory so i'm going to paste the public struct inventory item now i will add uh, above it the serializable uh, attribute so that we can serialize this inside our inspector of uh, unity so right click on it quick actions and say so using system it will be imported ab above we are using struct instead of a class because this will be much easier for us to store the value in a way that it is not easily modifiable uh, from other scripts because structs are passed by value we are going to talk about what is what does it exactly mean later for now let's finish implementing it so our inventory item needs to have a public int quantity public item so item public bool is empty and this is a property this will simply return if item equals null this means this uh, that this inventory item is empty now we are going to have two methods one will be public inventory item change quantity int quantity and uh, with a struct we cannot really assign a new value to one of its fields to assign a new value to a struct reference or rather to struct value we need to create a new struct and that's the one part of the, what is great about struct for our use we cannot really easily modify the struct itself so we need to return new inventory item and we are duplicating this item equals this so this reference the dot item and quantity we are going to assign a new quantity and last method that we will have is public static inventory item get empty item so again to get an empty item that we know what uh, the value uh, values are so we are consistent that empty item has the value of item equals null and quantity equals zero so we are going to use this lambda symbol and simply to skip those parentheses and we are going to return new inventory item with those parentheses here item equals null quantity equals zero and this will be it now last thing before we start uh, talking about why we are using struct here uh, is that let's go up to the inventory class and let's create here serialized field private list inventory item uh, inventory items this will be the name of the list okay so the idea here is that basically in computer memory we have something called the stack and the heap and generally when we have a class we have a reference on the stack so our inventory we have the reference to the inventory class and the class itself lives in the memory on the heap so there is some memory assigned to this and here is where the values assigned to this list live so the inventory items basically will live on the heap and their values will be saved here 
now the struct if we get the value of the struct so if we access one of the values of our class inventory so uh, from the list of inventory SO, oh, we are going to get one of the references to the inventory item. We are going to have a reference, so we are going to get the inventory item value. And we are going to get it on the stack. So this has no connection to the heap where the values on the list resides. So what it all means is basically that if we get the reference to one of those items on the list, we get the value on the stack and we can, for example, assign, we have this quantity, so we can say val.quantity equals some new value x, and this will not influence what is saved on the heap inside our class inventory as a reference. So it all means that it is not easy for us to modify the values on our list. To modify the value, we would need to access our inventory reference dot get the reference to our list, so some list variable, and get the position of this and assign to it to a new inventory item. And this way we can only assign the quantity equals uh, some x value so this allows us to secure our list of items so that if by any chance uh, some other class gets the reference to the inventory item it cannot modify it uh, compared to what we could do so for example if we have our inventory uh, reference to our inventory so we could assign the list equals new list and this way we basically are emptying the list of the inventory items inside our inventory class but with a struct as you see we cannot do this that easily so we are sure that if we modify our items on the item on the list we do it uh, we can only do it by accessing the inventory and if the list is private we of course cannot really do uh, that uh, through creating a new struct even like this we need to call some method on our class of the inventory so to modify the value of our item and this way we make our inventory secure and ensure that no bugs will creep in because we have modified something somewhere else okay i hope this short presentation gave you some idea of why are we using struct instead of the class reference and i will be sure to create a bit better video about this but for now let's finish implementing our inventory so so i know that beside this list i will need to have here a field serialized field public int size this will be a property we are going to have a get and the private set and it will be equal to 10. as you might recall we need to get the size uh, for our ui inventory to create the correct amount of fields inside our inventory content but we do not want any class to set this value we want to set it through the reference of our inventory so in the inspector probably or through the inventory through its own method now one downside of using structs that is not necessarily a downside is that they cannot be null so we can set inventory so reference val equals null because this is a class so we are creating here a reference but if we try to do the same with the value types like int x equals null we cannot do this because x is a value type it needs to have a value and the same thing will be with our inventory item uh, struct. This cannot be null, that's why we have this get empty item public static method that returns us an empty item. So we are going to create a new method inside our inventory SO. This will be called public void initialize. And we are going to simply call here inventory items equals new list of items. And uh, we are going to loop for int i equals zero, i less than size i plus plus. You can create it by typing for tab tab twice. And you're going to create it from the snippet. And we can call inventory item add. And we are going to call inventory item get empty item to add every to every field of our list an empty item. This is the only way that we can add those inventory items to our list because they cannot simply be uh, null. 
Now I believe that by default uh, we are going to get this quantity equals zero and the item equals null if we simply call uh, the something like inventory item item equals new inventory item because we have the default constructor and those values will be simply set to the default value so to null and to zero and we will need to call this initialize method to initialize our inventory at the start of our game now for the test purposes we are going to create a public void add item very rough implementation of this we are going to get item so uh, the item and int quantity and we are going to duplicate this for loop we can of course not loop through the size but rather from uh, through the inventory items dot quantity uh, or rather count in case we have extended our inventory although we should also set the size but this way we can rely on the inventory items count not on the size value and instead of calling this we can simply check if our inventory items with the index i let's check dot item or rather is empty then we know that if we found an empty item we can add to it the item that we are adding so let's call this inventory items with the index i equals new and we're going to create a new inventory item we need to open those parentheses and we can type item and we should we should have the intelligence give us those two fields item equals we are going to set it to item okay and we can pass a comma and we are going to set quantity equals quantity generally it might be better to create a custom constructor for our inventory item so that we do know which item is which because we have duplicate names here now while the fastest way to get the references to the list of items would be to get all the the whole list simply and pass it to our inventory controller to update our ui this way our inventory controller could access this list and modify it by setting the new values uh, because list is a reference type and a collection is so if we pass a list we are passing the reference to the heap where the list exists and we can modify it we do not want that so we are going to create quickly another method here before we finish this video and we are going to create the uh, public dictionary int inventory item get current inventory state and since not all items will be filled or some will be empty there is no point in updating all items we can assume that if we don't pass in this dictionary uh, an index of the item this item is empty and this way we can only update the desired item and leave them the rest not updated in our ui so we can create a dictionary int inventory item return value equals new dictionary int inventory item and we are going to look for int i equals zero int uh, i less than inventory items count i plus plus and we are going to check if inventory item i is empty we are going to continue else we are going to set return value i so in the in, uh, dictionary we are going to add on the position of, of with index i we are going to add inventory items i so this way the key of the dictionary will be the index uh, of the uh, on the list of our items and the inventory item will be referenced to our item but again since we are creating a new collection this value will be not the same as the uh, value on the list so since there will be no connection we are not going to be able to modify those values on our list so if we get all the indices or all the items that are filled in, inside this dictionary we are going to return this dictionary and we are going to use this method to update our ui inventory class through the inventory controller okay so with those two methods done let's finish this video and in the next one we are going to modify our inventory controller to be able to accept the values from our inventory so and we are going to update our ui inventory page using this data to see if everything works as expected okay see you in the next video